Because Warner Brothers won't release a cut of Justice League that never existed in the first place. And we're going to start with this. And hopefully, this will be the last time ever that we talk about the Snyder Cut. It is no joke. It is right on the money. It never existed. I'm glad we're getting this news. So, so, no, it's exactly what I've been telling people, too. I, it, it, look, the, the, the people that think that a Snyder Cut exists are just woefully ignorant to how movie productions work. The thousands of hundreds of thousands of people who are demanding the Snyder Cut, it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Round of applause, internet. You've won. So, as you guys are probably very much aware, it seems that after much uh, want, need, desire, and anticipation, it seems as though the Zack Snyder version of Justice League, or in other words, as many people have called it, the Snyder Cut, is finally going to be a thing after three years of fans demanding of its existence. So, most of us here saw Justice League, I'm assuming. I mean, it made, what, $600 million? Not bad, but not great either. So much so that it was considered a bit of a financial disappointment on the side for Warner Brothers in DC. Justice League itself had a very troubled production from the beginning. Uh, Snyder himself submitted a version of the movie that Warner Brothers was not fond of, that was almost apparently close to four hours, had several characters who ended up being cut from the finished product, which he then brought it down to two hours, but unfortunately tragedy struck when Zack Snyder's, I think, eldest daughter uh, committed suicide, and leaving Joss Whedon to pick up the pieces. So with Joss Whedon at the helm, Warner Brothers decided that they wanted to drastically change Justice League into a version that they felt was a little more optimal for audience consumption after the not so great reception of Zack Snyder's other film, Superman v. Batman Justice of Dawn. I thought Personally, I thought Zack Snyder's two previous entries in the DC Universe, uh, I thought Man of Steel was okay at times, and then as the movie went on and on and on, I began to realize he really does not understand Superman, does he? And then I saw Batman v Superman, and I had a little more hope this time. You know, here we, here we go. Here's the second movie. A Superman sequel, aka a Batman movie, and a start of the DC universe. Maybe he's learned this time. And then the movie went on, and on, and on. And I realized that not only does he not understand Superman, but he also does not understand Batman at all. Oh, like Batman killed a guy. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> really? Like. Like, 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 I'm like, wake the fuck up. Suffice so to say, Batman v Superman was a massive disappointment. You know, there are several videos talking about it and several people, several uh, people on YouTube who have defended Batman v Superman over the years. Because of the not so great reception of Batman v Superman, uh, Warner Brothers decided to bring in Joss Whedon to finish Justice League and give us a version that they felt would be more pleasing to audiences. And the result was a hodgepodge Frankenstein monster movie of two obviously very different uh, ideals and visions of what this movie should be. You know, you can almost kind of tell what was Zack Snyder and what was Joss Whedon because, you know, while the Zack Snyder parts feel a little more Zack Snydery, you have the Joss Whedon stuff that feel like it was pulled out of an Avengers movie. Avengers Age of Ultron, to be exact. Superman's a no-show. You got no powers, no offense. This guy might be working for the enemy, we don't know. You're tripping over your feet and mine. Oof. You're gorgeous. Because of these uh, changes and public knowledge became to be known that there were several scenes and 
uh, characters omitted from the production of Justice League for this new version of the movie. And because it became very well known that there were many things about Justice League that were left on the cutting floor, fans of Zack Snyder kept had started a campaign known as Release the Snyder Cut. Hashtag Release the Snyder Cut. And it wasn't just a bunch of nerds on the internet on Twitter either. You had actual celebrities, namely people who were involved in the movie themselves. You had Ray Fisher talking about release a Snyder Cut. You had Jason Momoa talking about release a Snyder Cut. And now that we're finally getting it, it seems like everyone seems on board with the release of Snyder Cut. Even Ben Affleck himself, who feels like he's been trying to avoid Batman these past two years. This is a very interesting uh, precedent that the fact that this is finally happening. Because... While you can look on the bright side, the positive of this is that this is this is a win for creative vision and a director's creativity and their rights to a movie. There are many movies, there are many uh, visions and films that we're never going to get to see. You know, we're never going to get to see George Romero's Resident Evil. We're never going to get to see George Miller's uh, version of Justice League. The director of Mad Max Fury Road at one point was going to direct his own version of Justice League, and we're never going to get to see that. And there's a bunch of other examples of movies that could have been really interesting that we're, that we're never going to get to see, be it uh, Yodorowsky's Dune or John DeBond's Godzilla. And on occasion, and on and in many times, we do eventually get the finalized, uh, definitive version that a director wants people to see. And it, but it usually wasn't until years later. Uh, an example would be the Richard Donner version of Superman 2 or the Blade Runner Final Cut, the only cut of the movie where director Ridley Scott had full creative control. Snyder himself revealed plans for this uh his version, his real version of Justice League after the uh, watch party he did for Man of Steel. And he invited a couple fans on. He invited Henry Cavill himself. And at the end of this watch along for Man of Steel, that's when he announced that his version of Justice League was going to be a thing. It was coming. And a bunch of people were excited. And a bunch of people on Twitter were losing their minds about it. It was... <laughs> L let me tell you something. Look at Twitter after like minutes after the announcement or the day of the announcement shit was insane now there are two ideas or two unconfirmed ways that this snyder cut is going to be seen now okay as of right now the snyder cut is in the works it's not technically it's not finished but it's currently in the works from what i've read it's either going to be a four hour movie or they're going to uh, separate the film into six parts, kind of like how Netflix released a version of the Quentin Tarantino movie, The Hateful Eight, that was separated into, I think, about six or so parts, like six, I think it was either six, five, or four hour-long parts. And I thought that was actually pretty cool. I actually really liked The Hateful Eight, and I think um, releasing it that way made the movie far more interesting, to me at least. So... This seems like something if 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 it were released in six parts like though like that like six chapters it would be uh rather interesting to see what Snyder's full vision was cuz based on everything I've read about the Snyder cut over the years it sounds like it would have been like three and a half hours long or four hours long this seemed like it was going to be really a long movie because he was going to cram a bunch of these a bunch of stuff in it there was going to be all these characters uh, we were going to find out that one character uh, the general character from man of steel was actually martian manhunter dark side was going to show up and the ending of that movie was going to lead into like that nightmare scene from bbs where superman takes over the world and it's all injustice style but on the other hand this could come out and we come to find out that it's really just a longer version of a movie that if i'm being quite honest really wasn't that good in the first place but no matter how this turns out this will be a win-win situation for warner brothers because this happens to be coming out at a time where Water Brothers will be having their HBO Max streaming service getting ready, and it's actually going to be coming out next week. 
I think it's kind of interesting that we're not going to get this Snyder cut of Justice League until a year later, but the announcement of the Snyder cut really has kind of like made people more interested in getting HBO Max. Now, HBO Max looks like it's going to have a bunch of stuff on it, but this is smart on Warner Brothers because the having an announcement like this has really turned people's heads to uh, HBO Max. For quite some time, there were those who denied the possibility or the existence of the Snyder Cut based purely on the now proven fact that Zack Snyder never truly 100% finished uh, Justice League as we've seen with many of his uh, photos on his Vero account of what some of his scenes would have looked like and in a lot of those sequences there are unfinished special effects and many people doubted the possibility that this cut could even exist because it was a lot of skim, a lot of like was schematic 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 schmack whatever the fuck that word is there was a lot of people who were going on about well they need more money they need this they need that they need to bring in these, back these actors if, if they want to do it which they clearly some of them do because you got you know you got ray fisher on board you got jason momoa you got ben affleck and i'm pretty sure you wouldn't have much issue getting the others besides urza miller well right now, right now urza miller is in some uh urza miller is in some hot fire hot water right now so bring him in might be a little uh challenging there was a video that surfaced a while ago of urza miller choking out a female fan so i don't know what's the deal with him i remember hearing a rumor that he was actually fired from the flash but nothing really came out of it so we're just going to treat it as a rumor many people denied the possibility the snyder cut could even happen or even exist because they would need more money to get the whole thing finished namely with it with visual effects am i interested in seeing this movie Yes, but I would say it's kind of like a morbid curiosity. Like, Justice League itself was a very interesting movie, not quality-wise, but as far as the history of it and how it came to be. So, I don't think I'm going to be going to be getting HBO Max immediately when it comes out next week, but I will eventually get it down the line, because I have more of a morbid curiosity to see what this Zack Snyder version of justice league will truly look like my only hope is that we get a scene with superman just full mustache like i think the only what the best thing that could come out of the snyder cut is that i want henry cavill to be full-on mustache because i think that would be amazing also have you seen henry cavill with a mustache that shit's fucking sexy. But anyway, that was my video. That was just my quick thoughts on this Justice League Snyder Cut. I'm really interested to see how this turns out and watching it. Uh, what do you guys think? What are your thoughts about the idea of this? Do you like the idea this is coming out? Do you not like the idea this is coming out? Sound off in the comments. I will most likely respond to you and I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.